let's talk about bias. Basically, it, it's a word which means it's an inclination or, or a prejudice, okay? And usually it's negative. You can have bias for something or against something, but usually it's prejudice. So a few weeks ago, um, in the US, there was a discussion between two politicians and one was rather on the left and the other one was rather on the right, like you can you know, expect and these kind of things. Um, you know, harsh words were exchanged because apparently that's how we do politics these days. And the person rather on the left was saying, you know, we need to be careful with AI because AI can be biased. And then the person on the right said, what nonsense, you know? Bias, uh, AI is just mass, it cannot be biased. And of course, it's true, mass cannot be biased, okay? AI relies on mathematical principles, mathematical equations. And those equations are always going to be true. Two plus two equals four on Earth, on the Moon, on Mars, everywhere in our known universe. I'm not going to speculate about unknown universe, but in our universe, two plus two equals four. There is no question. The problem is not the mass here. The problem is the data that you give to the mass. And so to illustrate that, let me um, explain to you uh, or, or tell you an anecdote. So a few years ago, a group of researchers came together and had a good idea. They said, we are going to make an AI model which takes patient history, like medical patients, and predict if a patient is more at risk to get pneumonia. Okay? Sounds like a good idea. It's something that we can automate and then the doctors have less work. That sounds pretty good. Unfortunately, something really weird happened and the human caught that. What happened is that the model was predicting consistently that asthma patients were less at risk to get pneumonia. And so of course that's a problem because if we think about it from a human perspective, it doesn't quite make sense, right? When you have asthma, you already have an affection of your respiratory system, so logic would tell us that it's rather more likely that they're going to get another affection of the respiratory system. So what was really going on is that patients with asthma were more likely to go to the doctor early because they were sensitive to their own body, okay? And then they were more likely to detect when something was wrong. So they would go to the doctor, and then the doctor would treat them early and then avoid a case of pneumonia or, or something that could degenerate into pneumonia. So basically what happened here is that the, the, the AI misunderstood the data, if you want. Or in other words, because AI is just mass, the data was biased, it was incorrect or incomplete at least. Okay? So in that case, they said, well, okay, now we know that, we can probably fix it in the model. But the problem is, what else did they miss in the model? And they started being very uneasy about the accuracy of the predictions. And then eventually, they ended up questioning the whole model and they discarded the experiment. So this is not used anymore. Okay? So it's a good explanation of things that can happen. If you hadn't had a human checking the results and saying, wait, something is not quite right here, then they, we, we might be using that and we might say, oh, you're an asthmatic, it's okay, you don't even need to worry about it, you know? And then, of course, that can have grave consequences. So we have this problem uh, quite a lot. For example, we have um, models which are doing language recognition, all right? And those models very often are trained with lexicons, dictionaries, if you want. And one of the issues is that the models that we use, very often we use the same models to train multiple services. Why? Because those models are pretty expensive to create. Okay, you need to gather the data, you need to curate the data, you need to manage it, you need to store it first of all. And then, you know, make sure, clean it up, make sure that it is suitable for the, for the model we have. And those lexicons are often biased because, well, because human society is biased. All right, so lexicons which reflect, you know, the language of a society is going to have the same bias. And the big problem with AI is that it's great at picking up the flaws, at picking up the bias. It's almost as if it was like, oh, those humans are so imperfect, let's just, you know, underline that and feed on that. So it's great at, at doing that. And we had a, an example at Microsoft, in fact, a couple of years ago, where a group of researchers at Microsoft decided to create an AI model with natural language understanding. And then they created a Twitter account for this AI, which was named Tay, T-A-Y. 
And what uh, was going on is that the, this model was supposed to learn from the interaction on Twitter, which in retrospect is probably the worst idea ever, right? You don't take a child and put them on Twitter without warning them and, and keeping an eye on what they do. And in fact, what's really happened is that within 15 hours, they became an anti-feminist, Nazi, troll, right extremist person, okay? Because what happened is that people started saying, oh, cool, there is this, uh, you know, experiment going on. They started feeding a whole lot of bollocks to that AI. And the AI just picked it up like that and adopted all our flows, okay? And became basically the worst of Twitter, which is really bad, <laughs> okay? So... That's, that's a huge issue, and after 15 hours, Microsoft had to say, oops, 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 let's remove that. Now, in fact, it was a pretty successful experiment, if you think about it, because it shows that you shouldn't do that. So we learned from that, so that's good.